So we've been discussing about how to solve systems of linear ordinary differential equations and we've already done an introductory lecture to that. So today we are going to consider the case when we have complex roots, when our argent values are complex. How do we find the corresponding argent vectors and how do we get the solution to that system of linear ordinary differential equations? So we are going to use this question to explain the concept and after solving this question, you'll be able to understand everything that this method entails. So you say we should solve this particular system of differential equations here. So you know, this here is our x dot, this is our coefficient matrix E and this is our x. So here we are interested in our coefficient matrix E. So you realize that E is equal to negative 3 to negative 1, 1. So that means the next thing for us to do is to find our argument values using the formula um, determinant of e minus lambda i equals zero. So when we find the argument values for this particular coefficient matrix, we we'll get lambda one will be equal to minus two plus i, and we we'll get lambda two will be equal to negative two minus i. So you can see that our argument values here are complex. So now the question is, how do we find the corresponding argument vectors and how do we get our solution? So whenever we have complex roots, when you are finding for the corresponding argument vectors, you know we have two argument values there, we just use one of them. Whenever I use one of them, that one will generate all the two Again, vectors you need for you. Okay, so let's take the first again value. So when lambda one is equal to negative two plus i, you realize when you're finding for the again vectors, use the formula e minus lambda i v equals zero, where v is our corresponding again vector. So let's just name v to be c. Um, k1 and k2. So realize that that means you're going to have something like so our e is negative 3 to minus 1 minus 1 then minus our lambda is minus 2 plus i then our identity matrix 1 0 0 1 so all times our V, which happens to be K1, K2, equals the zero vector, zero, zero. So when you do this computation here, you are going to end up with um, minus one minus I, two minus one, one minus I. We have our K1, K2, and it is equal to zero zero. So when we get here, we know this can also be written as the augmented matrix in this form. So we can write this in this form: negative one minus two, two minus one, then one minus i, zero zero. So now this is our E matrix. This is our B matrix. All right. So when you have this, then the next thing for us to do is to Use the rule echelon operation to reduce this, right? So when you're using a rule echelon operation, the first thing we do is that we make sure that the first or the leading element is one. So the only way we can do that is to swap row one and row two. So we interchange row one and row two. So when you do that, that means you're going to get minus one, one minus i. Minus one minus i two zero zero, and we're supposed to make sure this place is one. So that means negative rule one is equal to the new rule one. So when you multiply two by negative one, you we'll get one. Then we are going to get minus one plus i zero zero. And we have minus one minus i, and we have our two. So realize that we are done with this. 
right now we have the leading um, coefficient to be one but now we have to make sure whatever is beneath this is zero so we have to make sure that this particular thing that we have here should be zero so the only way to do that is to multiply this by um rule one and subtract it from rule two to give you the next rule two so you realize that you're going to get um for this what you're going to get negative one minus i rule one is one minus negative one minus i so you realize you are going to get negative one minus i this place will give us plus one plus i so this gives us zero so that means you're going to have zero here so you have one zero minus one plus i and when you take the second one the second one is also going to give us zero when you do it so we are going to get um let me bring my b here so after doing our um we actually an operation this is what you are going to end up with right let me write it in this form we have 1 minus 1 plus i 0 0 we have our k1 k2 which is equal to 0 0 so this implies that we have k1 minus um so plus minus 1 plus i k2 equals 0 right and you realize that this one here we have zero in this um, second rule so it means that our k2 is a free coordinate so k2 is a free coordinate and because k2 is a free coordinate we choose so we choose k2 to be one and if k2 is equal to one then that means k1 will be equal to um negative one because k2 is one times minus one plus i and it's going to give us k1 to be so you see this and this will give you one so one minus i so this is our k1 so that means that our eigenvector v is one minus i and one all right so when we get here we are not done then what we do is that we know that for in our introductory course we did this that um when you have a system of linear equation, the general solution is given as s of t equals c1 um, cv, then e lambda t, where this is the eigen value and this is the eigen vector, and this is just an arbitrary constant. So you realize that that means that our lambda t equals to, so let's ignore the c for now. We are going to get v. Our v is 1 minus i1. That's what we had here. We are going to have e. If you know that our corresponding the again value which give us this corresponding again vector was negative 2 plus i. Then all times t. So let's go ahead. To so realize that with this, you are going to get s of t equal to 1 minus i1. And this is the same as e minus 2t dot e minus i t. And you realize that we can decide to bring this inside. So we get s of t to be equal to. So we have e minus 2t, 1 minus i. We have e minus 2t here because times 1 it will give you this and this will give us e i t okay so see we have something here and you see when you take the less method or the oilless method which is i theta you know i theta is equal to um cross theta plus i sine theta when you take this our e i t you know this is the same as sine t plus i cos t so what we do is that we expand that so when we expand this we get x of t because you should know when you expand what is here you're going to get e minus 2t 
minus i e minus 2t and this will give you e minus 2t right now we are seeing this is um sorry oh why did i make this mistake sorry so this is cos t plus i sine t okay so we are going to have cos t plus i sine t so everything here is going to be this so you realize that when you multiply this true by this you are going to get um very lengthy equation which is going to give us so this time this it will give us e minus 2t cos t this time this will give us um minus i e minus 2t cos t this time this will give us plus i e minus 2t sine t and this time this remember i times i is minus 1 so this will give us plus because minus minus will give us plus so we get plus e minus 2t sine t for the top one there and this will give us e minus 2t cos t then this time this will give us plus i e minus 2t sine t so you realize that with this one that we have we have some which has i's and some which has what no i so those we have the i are the imaginary parts and those without the i's are the real part so we can group this in terms of imaginary parts and real parts and this will give us so you realize that this is a real part so we get e minus 2t cos t and this is a real part so plus e minus 2t sine t and here we have e minus 2t cos t then to give us plus i so we are considering those with imaginary numbers so here we are going to get negative e minus 2t cos t that's here and this will give us plus e minus 2t sine t and those here to you know this is the only one which has the imaginary part so you are going to have e minus 2t sine t so when you have this then what it shows is that this is your first arguing vector and this is your second arguing vector so you realize that we use just one again value but it has given us all the two again vectors that we needed so that means that um the solution to our equation will be a uh, system of equation will be x of t and y of t will be equal to so c1 remember c1 times the first thing that we have here so we have e minus 2t cos t plus e minus 2t sine t and here we are going to have e minus 2t cos t then plus c2 remember we don't bring the i when you're writing it's in the main equation so we are going to have e minus 2t sine t and minus e minus 2t cos t and this will give us e minus 2t sine t so meaning this is the solution to the systems of ordinary linear differential equations we have there sometimes you can be given initial conditions to find a particular solution that's to find your c1 and c2 so that you don't have any arbitrary constant in it that's the particular solution so this is how we go about things when you are solving systems of linear equation and we have complex roots thank you very much for following i'm with you can window